Spinster Life Podcast. So, how has your week been? I'll um, talk to you in a bit. Yeah. Um, you know, I can't keep track of time. Everything is a yeah. blur. You know, hit the new year hard. Like, I'm going to do all the things. I'm going to start my online writing business. And I'm going to do all these things. And like that, you know, that momentum died. Okay. Well, you made it almost three weeks. Yeah. That's, that's a pretty good run. It's a run. So that's, you know, a little disappointing. Um, I settle back into, you know, just the normal disappointment that is life. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good. You can't wait for that. Can't wait. Mm. And. Uh, you know, just because of the uh, inauguration, it does now feel like it is just like the regular level of disappointment and not that like deep existential disappointment on top of just regular disappointment. Yeah, we're back to our normal kind of irritation. Yeah. That, like life is disappointing and meaningless. Uh, back to just regular old American disinterest and mediocrity. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. A Amen. Man, uh, how Amen. was your week? Um, I slept through most of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yes, back to back to normal. <laughs> um, it's just work. It's just work. I think I'm in like a very, I'm in a weird mental place. You know, like I'm turning forty in less Shh. than six months now. Shh. Let's like not two two days less than six months. Let's not talk about that. That because I'm not you know, far behind you. Not because I don't want to yeah, hear about your I stuff. Mean, I always wonder if I just did my life wrong. You know, that's kind of like my constant question. <laughs> yeah. You know, did I do it wrong? Am I doing it wrong? And then like just essentially spinning on that every day of every week of every month of every year of my life. Maybe you're um, only doing it right if you're constantly questioning if you're doing it wrong. Yeah, I don't think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I never said I had like all the secrets to life. I definitely don't. No, I mean, it's weird because on one hand, I don't think there are secrets. Everyone's hauling the same load of shit up the same hill, you know, in in general. I think it's just, it's getting to me a little more because it's kind of like TikTok. Like, well, if you are doing it wrong, you only have this long to figure it out and switch direction. (laughs) So I think... It's a weird situation for like someone who is so existentially anxious to then pick a career that has absolutely no certainty to it. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, I should have become an accountant or something where it's just like, here's a paper, do the things on the paper, give the paper to someone else. You get bored really fast. You would have either, you would have become like a mob accountant or something just like to feel alive. I I would have had to, they would have had to be like, add this up or I'm going to shoot you. And then it would have really fulfilled my life. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I do get bored really fast. So it was a good week for both. Oh, yeah. It was just banner banner. week. Just fucking banner. (laughs) Oh, God. Ooh. Well, I mean, with that in mind, like, I think it's really interesting that we're talking about Mindy Kaling, because I feel like Mindy Kaling did it right. She you know? did it right. She did it right. I mean, and there are lots of things that helped Mindy Kaling do it right. Like having parents that were very, like, loving and supportive and not dysfunctional. Yes. And they were very... uh well-to-do and yes. educated and clearly um, of the uh, ambitious sort. But it's interesting that, you know, we'll get into it, but it's interesting that at some point she decided that she wanted something else or something more in her life, and then she just kind of did it. I think that's um, um, that's a baller move. It's a baller move. It's a baller move. So in addition to her parents and all that, you know, love and attention and money. <laughs> um, Mindy Keeling also seems to have boundless energy, yeah. um, which I have the opposite of that. Um, <laughs> and if you have anything when it comes to children, it better fucking be energy. So, um, but she's, I don't know. I, I will say I'm not like a super huge fan of her, her comedy and her performance. You know what I mean? Like right. I, She's a lot for me. And that's um, fair because, you know, we're not really right. here to to criticize any of her work. Right. We're here to but talk about the spinsteriness of it all. But I do respect the bitch. Like, she she just does it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No. And, that's, and she doesn't care that it, it doesn't look like what other people think it should look like. She's very 
driven and doesn't seem to have like a, she doesn't have like an excuse maker and she doesn't have, um, she doesn't seem to have those holdbacks, you know, that a lot of us do. So yeah, yeah. yeah so like she was, she has, she has confidence in herself. Oh, for sure. I was not sure. raised to have confidence in myself. I was raised no. to constantly question every thing, single thought that I've ever had. The Northern New England way, that's how it is. I think I've said it before. We're Mayflower people, okay? You need to get off your high horse. <laughs> like, get on to Plymouth Rock. Stop liking yourself and yeah. no, that's... shovel someone else's driveway. That is, yep, that's pretty, that's pretty Midwestern. Yeah. Yep. So who do who do you think you are? You're not who better. Who do you think, who do you, you, think are? you are? All right. Well, let's learn about Mindy, let's huh? Let's learn about Mindy. This spinster is not the first person who jumps to top of mind when you think of spinsters. She has kids. She has a guy in her life that she's been sometimes romantically linked with. But the spinster of the month, Mindy Kaling, is unmarried. And we're going to take a look at how Mindy can be a role model for spinsters who also want to be parents. Mindy Kaling was born Vera Mindy Chunk Collingham on June 24, 1979. Her parents had a meet-cute at a construction site. Her dad was the architect of a hospital, and her mom was the OBGYN. The couple immigrated to the U.S. in 1979, and soon thereafter had Mindy. The Mindy in Mindy's name is because her parents liked the TV show Mork and Mindy. She went to Buckingham, Brown, and Nicholas, which sounds like a law firm, but indeed it is a private school that turns out very accomplished people. If you want to get a feel of what kind of school it is, Mindy started studying Latin in the seventh grade. Yeah. In her collegiate years, she attended Dartmouth and was a playwriting major. She did improv with the Dog Day Players, she did acapella with the Rockapellas, and she wrote for the college's humor magazine, as well as interning for Conan O'Brien. You know, the Dartmouth comedy path. Her stage name was Mindy Kaling because the white guys running the open mics couldn't pronounce her full name. I mean, I can't either, but I would have learned. What she's the most well-known for is The Office, because of the sheer number of people stress-binging the show as part of their self-care. She started as a writer-performer and ended her time at the show as an executive producer and director. Since The Office, she's continued to work both in front of the camera and behind, sometimes both at the same time. One of her notable projects was The Mindy Project, which she wrote, produced, and acted in. The show is a single-camera sitcom about an OBGYN in New York who was good at her job, but is trying to get the rest of her life in order. Mindy's mom was the inspiration for Mindy's character in The Mindy Project. Mindy was inspired by her mom's ability to have it all, the career, the family, and make it all look effortless. In The Office, Mindy's character has an on-again, off-again relationship to actor B.J. Novak's character, which Mindy later revealed was a reflection of their off-screen relationship. They continue their friendship to this day, which Mindy calls, quote-unquote, weird as hell. Novak is the godfather for children, but nosy-ass people still speculate about whether he's the father of the children and if the two were married. Mindy is a single mom by choice. She was able to let go of expectations around what a family is and just do what made her happy. She's on the record as saying, quote, I hope you find a partner if that's what you want, but if you're thinking about having kids and you're waiting for that to be the reason, I just want to encourage you not to feel like you need that. It has been the biggest difference in my life. It brought me the most unadulterated joy in my life. If I hadn't made that decision, I would be kicking myself, end quote. She has chosen to keep the identity of the father of her children to herself and keep the children's lives very private as well. Mindy's Netflix show Never Have I Ever was released in April 2020. She co-wrote the screenplay for the upcoming movie Legally Blonde 3 and is set to release a collection of essays. And that is our spinster of the month, Mindy Kaling. I think that's our first spinster that uh, had children. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting because, I mean, I think we can agree that spinster is a really outdated term, right? Um, that's why we're taking it back. But... Along with the idea of spinster is this idea of the order in which women should live their lives. Even like the like nursery rhymes or whatever, right? First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes baby and the baby carrot. It is, that's how you do it. You do marriage, then you do babies. I think that's something, yeah, that we haven't really gotten to yet, which is with the idea of spinsterhood, there's all these other ideas that kind of come along with it. And one of the big ones is you don't have children until you're married. Marriage is the step you must take before you have kids. And if you don't take it, then it's it's worse than being a spinster, right? You have had a child out of wedlock and you should be shamed and probably stoned. Shame. <laughs> so, Shame. You should wear the scarlet letter. The scarlet letter and your children are bastards. But, you know, this idea that 
marriage and child rearing do, do not have to be connected. And you have children because you want children. You know, it's not necessarily the you have children because you got married or you got married because you wanted to have children. Like they're not, there's definitely still correlated, but it doesn't seem like there's as tight of a, of a chain between the two as there used to be. Yeah. This is a very intentional choice for her. Like you said, they're not bastards. They're not mistakes. They're very intentional children. Incredibly. Don't we all wish we were wanted that badly? You know, this idea yeah. that my mom wanted me, you know, more than she wanted to wait around to find, you know, a partner or whatever. She decided that she was going to have kids, you know, that's really a lot of commitment. We don't know her life. She's kept this whole thing very private. And I love that too. I love that too. Especially as someone who seems very bombastic and very interested in media attention. And I'm not like hating on her. Right. She's like, comfortable with her life. She's comfortable of fame. with it. She is comfortable being who she is, which, you know, she is a loud, in your face, colorful, vibrant kind of woman, you know. And so I find it um, very interesting that she has kept that part of her life private, both for, you know, her children's sake and arguably for her own mental sanity. Because it just doesn't have any bearing on her work or on her career. Exactly. I mean, it's interesting because, you know, the Mindy Project really was about her dating. It was about her trying to find love at what some people would consider like a later age. You know, if you have an OBGYN practice, you are not 24. I wonder how much that was just a reflection of where she was in her life. And at some point she was just like, well, I want to have kids and I don't have that partner yet. And so I'm just going to have kids. That's ballsy to me. I mean, it does help that she's made of gold bars. She has the means to pay for her help. She can hire a name. Yeah. She can yeah. hire, you know, other people to come and help her. She doesn't have to do it all by herself. So yeah. that obviously makes it easier for her. It's, you know, it is such a big step. So, I mean, she must have felt like she had the village around her to be able to make that choice. And again, yes, the resources, the financial resources definitely help. And also, I think the parental resources. Her mom did die and never met any of her children. But oh, her dad, really? wow. Yeah, her dad is still in the picture. Because um, wow. she did mention her dad in one of the interviews. What did, do we know, like, what happened to her mom? Um, she gets she died of, yeah, she died of cancer. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. And it was actually the day she died was the day that um, Mindy found out that she was getting the Hulu, not the Hulu deal, the um, the deal for the Mindy project. Wow. Yeah. That's intense. I, right? And just because her mom was such an important part of her life that like to have that taken away. She had these people in her life that modeled how to be good parents, how to, you know, and have a career, just how to be loving parents. She had that modeled for her. In her case, it's not like I have two children and I'm divorced and I have an ex, you know, who we have to navigate all this with. It's just right. like I come with two children, <laughs> like, and it's not, you know, and I decided to have children before I met you. And it was an independent decision, you know, independent of relationship, a romantic relationship. You know, that's, that's um the cojones on this one the uh <laughs> the ovaries on this one the ovaries on this one the ovaries on this one um and i think um, it's just another type of spinster too like we've seen women their career is the love of their life yeah um, or they have you know a best friend who's the love of her life and she her family the family that she created is the love of her life to look at what you have and see that you have so much and just be willing to say but I still want something else. I still want something more. She's got all these TV deals. She's, you know, she's a well-known actress and comic and, you know, producer and writer and all of these things. From the outside, it would have looked to a lot of people like, oh, she has it all. And I feel like for those who had said, oh, she d doesn't have it all, they probably would have immediately gone to, but she doesn't have a husband, you know? Mm -hmm. And she was just like, uh-uh, no, 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 no. I don't have kids and that's what I want. I mean, that's really, yeah, making intentional choices to to give yourself, you know, the life that you you honestly want. Yeah. And uh, and uh, and also like knowing what that is going to do to her career, you know, because if you're if you're a showrunner, much less, I mean, we're talking like with Mindy Kaling, it's not the same as Shonda Rhimes, you know what I mean? Shonda Rhimes not acting, especially as the lead actress in her series, you know, right. So the fact that Mindy is doing that on top of, you know, EPing and writing and doing all of these other things, she does a lot of appearances. And she doesn't she like, she does some sort of she's like the spokesperson for Oh, the soup. For soup? She's like, yes. the, she's the soup lady. <laughs> Um, and, and HelloFresh. 
Oh, and HelloFresh. She is, yes. she is getting that um, sweet, sweet HelloFresh money. <laughs> HelloFresh, if you're listening. It just seems like a really hard choice, and there is some braveness to it. And and with a, with an asterisk, right? Like, I'm not saying that Mindy Kaling is the Mother Teresa of uh, moms because she decided to have children by herself. But, like, let's be real. Like, that is still an incredibly hard choice and one that, I don't know, I think it's kind of like a role model choice. Even if it's not your choice, just to see, like, this woman is, this is what I want my life to be and look like. And she was like, okay, I guess I'm doing this, you know? Exactly. How old is she now? She's um, she's not that much older than us. She's like 41, I think. So she's two, about almost exactly two years older than me. Yeah. So yeah, she'll be turning the big four two this year. I mean, I get it. You get to a certain point and I've been reading up a lot about, don't ask, but I've been reading up a lot about geriatric pregnancies, which in the medical community means- 35. Anytime. Yes, clearly she was getting the memos. You know, men don't have that TikTok. They don't have that thing that's like, okay, either you're going to do this in your lifetime or you're not. You better figure it the fuck out. It does just kind of highlight that regardless of how many resources you have, like as a woman, time is time, you know, and you start inching closer to 40. And I mean, the chances of you conceiving naturally once you hit 45 are like slim to none. And to have all of that on top of all the other responsibilities that she has, you know, which she is very fortunate to have in a lot of ways, it's, it's still really remarkable, I think. I agree. Yeah. She is, um, she's a good spinster role model. You know, just the fact that she is single. When you Google Mindy Kaling married, the first thing that pops up is it, like, who is Mindy Kaling married to? They are just assuming that she's married. It's weird because it doesn't happen the other way. No. I don't think. You know what I no. mean? If a man has a kid, you're like, oh, he has a kid from a previous relationship. And like people just shrug. They're like, rrr, rrr. you know what I mean? Like it's like, oh, they had a baby. Well, who 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 knocked her up? You know, like it's like this huge big secret. It's like, do you remember those baby dolls from like fifth or sixth grade where it was like baby surprise? And if you got one and you didn't know the sex, you would go to wherever. I think like I used to look at them at like Woolworths. I mean, this is how old it was. You'd like go in and you see all the, in the baby dolls, they just all look the same, you know, because they're babies. And you would only get to find out what it was if you bought it and got home and then you get to open it. And then it was like, surprise, it's, you know, and it wasn't like, here's some genitalia for you. It was right. like, surprise, it was, here's it a piece blue? of paper yeah. that says what it is. Um, yeah, this is kind of like daddy's surprise. <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> right. Ooh, pick out this baby and then open the box and better who the daddy is. Um, yeah, it's just kind of funny, which is like, I think it is interesting too, because I mean, we don't know her life, so we're just playing speculation here, but, um, assuming the father is not having a fatherly role in the, in the child's life, like it is kind of interesting because what does it matter then? You know, like as someone who grew up with like a step parent, the parent who raises you is the parent, not the parent who like donates DNA, you know, like they may have a biological donor, but they may not have a father, you know? So people's obsession with like, well, who's the father? It's just kind of odd. It's very odd. Because she's, like, very obviously going to provide a very good, loving home. I think she does have people around that can be male role models for the children. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know that you necessarily need any more than that. Like, yes, obviously your children should be around men and understand a little bit how they are. I don't think you need, you know, the the father person. It's it's their DNA donor. I think the same is true for whether it's a mom or a dad. You want a mom or a dad who wants to be a mom or a dad. Right. You know what I mean? Like I look at my brother with his kid and I'm just like if my dad had been one tenth of that how much no- more normal would I be? <laughs> like, it's just a thing where you're like, wow, you know, like he gets down on the floor, he plays with the kid. He like has, you know, they have a thing going on. Like it, they have a connection, obviously they bonded. Like if the parent, whether it be the biological mother or the biological mother is not participating, then why are we giving them the time of day? I'm not as interested in who the baby's father is, but I am interested in like, right. Like what is her life like? What is her life like? I don't know. I feel like Mindy's telling me there isn't a perfect way to do it, which I still don't believe, but <laughs> <laughs> but I'm taking notes. 
there certainly must be a code somewhere. But, you know, if you're going to use a crib sheet, you know, Mindy's isn't a bad one to use. Yeah, not at all. Um, I do want to know, like, what was what made you want to talk about Mindy in general? Because she's definitely not our typical spinster. Right. Um, it was it was the kids thing. Yeah, she is not our typical spinster. That obviously, like romantic things, you know, dating is it might have been a part of her story at one point. She's because... clearly a romantic. I mean, the girl is obsessed with love. Right. Like... <laughs> yeah. And then she like she isn't married. Yeah. But she has yeah made the choice. She she did the steps out of order, and she may never do the marriage step. And yeah, I just wanted to explore that because, um, you know, we're 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 we might be spinsters, but we're not celibate. No. God, no. And I think also, like, we're both also getting to that age. With regard to kids, we kind of have to decide in the next couple right. of years. Like, no, we, TikTok. We do. Yeah. The whole saying that, like, 50 is the new 40 and 60 is the new 50 and whatever, you know? And it's like, yes, but, like, now when it comes to this, you know, like, there's still a limit. Yeah, we have to push back all these decisions because of, like, college or wanting to be set up financially and getting far Yeah, and there's, career. like, all this debt. And it's, I mean, I look around in my life and I'm like, how in God's name would I have a kid? Like, where would I put it? How would I pay for it? This is where you start to see people our age leave Hollywood, leave L.A., leave New York, you know, move to somewhere that is affordable, you know, to raise their families because otherwise... It literally seems impossible. And what are you going to do? You're going to, like, have a baby and then have, you know, in my case, you're, like, 27-year-old roommate, like, getting high next door? Like, I don't think so. No. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, um, that's, yeah, at least you know that that's not a good parenting decision. Yeah. Well, I think, I think this was interesting, and I think yeah. it actually made me appreciate her more. I do want to turn her down a lot of the time, which is, like, you know, she is who she is, and she has many fans. She doesn't need my fandom. I, we have to remember, she's a different type of person than we are. She's, like, a happy person. She is a happy person. We are not happy She people. seems to like people. Yeah. She seems to like everything. She seems, yeah, optimistic about life. Yeah. Even her characters, her Kelly Kelly character, her Mindy character, like all of them kind of seemed that way, you know. I will say, I do really appreciate her earring game on the Mindy project. And I feel like yes. it reflects her as a human. I mean, her wardrobe is fun. On The Office, she was so dowdy. They just well, like... But it was at... It was office. It was... it was That's what business yeah. casual looked like at that time in history. Down. Yeah. I was just like, really? Do people have to dress like this? And they were in... Uh, what? Pennsylvania. That's why I don't. Be- that's why I never belonged in an office. Because <laughs> you, uh, your twin set game was just weak. Uh, my twin set game was weak, and on the like few occasions where I did wear a twin set, I like after I just went and got into my car and shot myself in the head, and it <laughs> just. <laughs> I, and then it was a brand new day. <laughs> and so everyone's favorite part of the show, or at least mine, uh, Amy. Why are you single? Uh... I would have to say because of Dateline and try, true crime shows in general. Like, you meet a guy, you get married, go out on a boat somewhere, you sign a life insurance policy, and no one ever sees you again. Did you just watch the Scott Peterson one again? I did. <laughs> like, I did. Yeah. I did, too. I, did. <laughs> I watched that one on, I think it was on Netflix or something, that was, like, trying to convince us that Scott Peterson maybe didn't do it. No, but he like, did it. But he did. But he did. <laughs> and that's why I don't get married, oh. because your risk of bad things happening to you goes up exponentially. I, a, yeah. I know I'm just playing it safe, being single, and not getting murdered. Not getting murdered. Not getting murdered. <laughs> uh, I like that. If you were like, someone proposed to you, and you were like, his name is Jacob, by the way, and you were like, Jacob, I can't. And he's like, but Amy, why? And you were like, I just don't want to get murdered (laughs) uh that's just why you have to have equal life insurance policies you know just like you murder me i will kill you (laughs) i i get the same coverage on you so like we don't get the same idea because like what if i get the idea first exactly also people are just so bad at murdering each other these days like well bad in what regard like bad that they get caught or just yeah they just do it (laughs) badly it's just 
if I got murdered, I'd want the killer to get caught. I know. Because you watch enough true crime. You're like, I could murder and get away with it. But the thing with Dateline is Dateline is very rarely a whodunit. Like, Dateline is just like, here's another fool that, mar- that like, murdered his wife or his girlfriend, you know? It's not like forensic files where, like, they have to, like, see what stage the, like, larvae of this creepy bug is in. Or yes. they're like, these were ash leaves and they were in this decomp state and... You know what I mean? There's still no shortage of dead wives that signed life insurance (laughs) policies on forensic files. That's true. That's why my sister is the beneficiary of my life insurance policy. Mm. Oh, that's good, too. I really think because I have done so poorly in my life choices, it's the only way my sister is going to actually, like, get any, like, good money out of it. So I figure, like, that's, like, my... Her inheritance for me is me having an asinine insurance policy on myself for her so because she's not going to inherit shit otherwise (laughs) also a reason to be a single child or an only child if uh you know your your beneficiary of your life insurance policy is your sister glad i'm an only child yeah you are lucky there Mm -hmm. i mean my parents don't have anything so i don't need i'll have to talk to my mom about getting life insurance (laughs) policy on her (laughs) oh Um. Happy thoughts. <laughs> Always. <gasps> Always. Unicorns and rainbows over here. Oh, my God. Um, so, yeah, Eva, why are you single? It's more of like why I'm not married. I am not okay. currently single. So the person I've been seeing, we're getting serious. But that kind of has caused me to have major anxiety. I have been in long-term relationships, and then I'll, I'll have, like, years and years where I'm single, right? That's just, like, how I do. So... You know, I'll be with someone for five years, then I'll be single for five or six years, then I'll be with someone for 10 years, then I'll be single for like two or three years, you know? Like, I don't have to always have a boyfriend. Like, like I'm totally fine. You're not intermittently serially monogamous. Yeah, that's fair, right? Yeah. And it is a kind of thing where you look around and you're like, this is how I live my life, right? This is how my personality manifests in how I live my life. Like, I'm. I'm like a extroverted introvert. So like 99% of the time I want to be by myself. (laughs) I have all this stuff. And I literally had like a session with my therapist like two weeks ago where I started crying because he's like a neat freak. And like, I am cluttery as fuck me mainly because I have too much shit. But like, I started like freaking out. But essentially, you get to this age, and I'm like, I have a lot of strong preferences about things, you know, like, I am a particular person, I'm very definitive about like, what I like, and what I do not like, you know, like, there's not a lot of gray area with me. I just know what I like. I can look at any piece of clothing in anyone's wardrobe and tell you if I love it or I hate it. And there's nothing in between most of the time, right? Right. And like color schemes, like he likes yellow. Like I can't, (laughs) you know, (laughs) like, you know, or like I'm very, you know, particular about like bedding and like things that sound really stupid. But when you start to think about having two people share a life together, you're just like, how would that even possibly work? Like the dog sleeping in the bed, he would get used to it because he's the kind of guy who's like very like laid back and chill. And like, and it is, it is lovely having a dog sleep next to you in the winter. Yes. Oh my God. And like, also just like when you want to cry and about how you're cluttery, (laughs) you have a dog to cry on. Um, Mine's very absorbent. Um, (laughs) You know, it's kind of like if you get married or, or get into a serious relationship when you're like in your early twenties, you haven't figured out a lot of these things, you know, or if you have, you're so much more malleable to them where I'm like, no, this has to go here. You know, or like, no, this is, no, when we, when we wash the knives, they go blade down in the drying rack (laughs) or like, okay, but that's just safety. It is just safety, safety. but it, it, you know, it's just when you've been the person you are for 40 years, right. And you're trying to make that work with someone else who has been the person they are for 40 plus years, you know, it is a lot more difficult than if you are 22 and trying to do that with someone and you're young and fresh and you don't hate the world yet yeah and you're like of course i'll give up blah 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 i'm getting way ahead of myself like you're right you're just you're concerned about cohabitation i'm concerned not just about cohabitation but also just i mean i guess 
I, I think I see, speaking of Dateline, I saw this um, thing where like these people were dating, they'd been dating for like eight years or something. And if it, if I had seen it 10 years ago, I would have judged the shit out of them because they were like, they'd been dating for eight years, but they didn't live together. I was just like, oh, bitch, he's married. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but like now I'm like, oh, that's how you do it. <laughs> like, that's, that's how it is. You know what I mean? I like, do. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's like, yeah, when I was in my 20s, that was the goal. Like, I should live with someone. Also, it makes like so much more financial sense to live with someone. So but... much more financial sense and like driving sense. You know what I mean? I do not like his bed and he does not like my bed. So one, that's a big problem. That's a huge <laughs> like, problem. Like, I have to, like, I could sleep over, but I make the choice not to because I'd rather be asleep in my bed, which honestly is a point you get to when you're an old human being and are mm-hmm. like, no, I enjoy my bed, so I'm going to leave. <laughs> I enjoy <laughs> like, my bed more than cuddling. Yeah, and then you have to drive home and, like, it's like a whole thing, you know? When you're 20, you're like, sure, I'll sleep on your uncomfortable fucking bed and then I'll get up at the ass crack of dawn so I don't get a ticket because I'm parked in front of your apartment and then I'll drive home and, like, you know then have to work it's just like i don't have time or energy for that i can't all. disagree with anything you have said yeah about so, this so far i don't see wedding bells anytime in the future <laughs> i mean just because you're married doesn't mean that you have to cohabitate i mean we could get like a duplex yeah <laughs> i don't see why not yeah we could even have a kid just like the kid could have two houses the kid could have two houses that are connected. I think that would be ideal. Yeah. The kid could just think it's one house. <laughs> we just won't tell it. And that's then they'll just be like, but where's your other house? Because that's what's that's how yeah, things exactly. are. People have two houses, right? That's how things are. <laughs> I mean, meanwhile, people in like China are like raising families where it's like married people and then a kid in like 250 square feet. So I don't know what I'm complaining about. <laughs> Um, this is what this segment is for, Eva. Talking yeah. about and bitching about why we are still. We should just accept it and rename this podcast The Complainers. <laughs> um, yeah. Or maybe that'll be our spinoff podcast, okay. The Complainers. Yeah. And we can just complain about things. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I like that so much. I love it. Um, and, and I also... We'll always be single. <laughs> Since you are in a relationship, I do have some proposed name changes to the segment. Oh, okay. Um, why are you breaking your mother's heart? And or why can't you settle down? I mean, just, you know, just, I'm, I'm just spitballing here. Or why, just why aren't you married? It should be more specific as why aren't you married? You're single right now, but you date? Well, I used to. <laughs> Several years <laughs> yeah. ago, I used to. Now you're like, I'm never doing that again. Uh, I am. I just can't say that. It's like at the top of my list of priorities. Well, that's cool. I mean, this we have this podcast if we never get married, so. Exactly. Yeah, you know, we'll have something to fall back on. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's the end of the show. And uh, if you can't get enough of us, follow us on Instagram. We are Spinster Life Podcast, and our feed is full of quotes. We love some quotes. 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 And our website is spinsterlife.com. If you want to email us, please do reach out. Tell us we're doing everything wrong, including our lives. And we'll probably agree with you. <laughs> you can reach us at spinsterlifepodcast at gmail.com. Yeah.